Father, thank you, Lord, for breaking the chains over our lives. Thank you for by faith. We believe that this evening chains are falling off in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Being in your presence is not a sacrifice, it is a privilege. But you said when we come before you, we should come with expectations because you will always meet us. Father Lord, I ask that Lord, let everyone that is here return blessed in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God minister to everyone and let your heart be open to receive in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord you saturate this atmosphere with your glory and speak to us like never before. Grant us living testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. This is our partner service. Praise the Lord. And in this service, we'll have time to pray for us and minister to us. Praise the Lord. And I know you are here because you want God to bless you. And I can assure you that God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Right from the first intercessory prayer, praying about the presence of God, down to choir administration about the presence of God. I know I'm in tune with what God is said to do for us this evening. Praise God. It is our month of dedication. Hallelujah. And then we have understood what is dedication, the cost of dedication, how to be dedicated. And then this evening, I want to draw us early in the beginning of the month before we go deep into our month of dedication. We are already deep. Hallelujah. But before we go further into dedication to God's manifest presence in our life, to call our attention for the need to rededicate our dedication to hosting God's manifest presence in our life. Exodus 33 verse 15. Exodus chapter 33 verse 15. Exodus 33 verse 15. The Bible says, And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry not up hence. Hallelujah. Once again, and he said unto him, Moses, saying unto God, as I'm saying to God, and I believe you are saying the same to God, if his presence go not with us or with me, let me not move further from where I am. Hallelujah. One of the most important things in life, or especially in Christianity, I've noticed that we have looked down on is the significance and the importance of of the manifest presence of God in our life. Now, I want to give you some advice before we start. You, you need to understand that you can partake of somebody's atmosphere, but you cannot be imparted with somebody's atmosphere. What it means is that if somebody carries a measure of God and steps into this place, you can enjoy that atmosphere, but he cannot impart it. Why? Because... The presence of God means God himself. And you don't impart relationship, you develop relationship. Hallelujah. You cannot impart the presence of God. You can only teach people. Just like when we call the register in school, we say, Samuel, then you say presence. That means you are here in class. The presence of God means God himself being with you in a tangible way. So when somebody carried a measure of God, you can enjoy his atmosphere while the person is there. But as he moves away, he moves with that presence and that atmosphere. Sometimes the, the deposit can be there for a while, but after a while it fades away. That is why you can be dry before coming to church, but when you come to church, you feel the atmosphere of God's presence. But then when you go back to your room, you don't feel it because... The atmosphere cannot be transferred. You have to cultivate his presence. Secondly, is God is willing to manifest himself to us to the level you are willing to go to God. That means the level of God's manifest presence in your life is dependent on how far you want him to go with you. In James chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Actually, the way I like written, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. The way I like written is draw near to God and you will recognize that how God... Because 
What that statement actually means is not as if when you move one step, God will take one step forward. Hallelujah. God never moved. You were the one that moved. So when you draw nigh to God, all you recognize is how closer God is now to you. Not that God will also take a step forward. So the level of God's manifest presence is dependent on you. You can carry the level of the presence any of God's servant or God's man of God carry. But the depth and the extent is dependent on you. Number three, I want us to note before we continue, is do not run away from God's presence. Anytime God is drawing you and cultivating you, drawing you closer to him, just like Jonah, in Jonah chapter 1 verse 3, he made an attempt to run away from God's presence. Every one of us here, there have been moments where the Lord has called you and sought for you. Sought to fellowship with you, sought to develop his presence. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he went down to Joppa. So don't flee from God. Anytime God wants to be with you manifestly. Anytime God wants to manifest himself from you or to you. Anytime God wakes you up and calls you for depth of intimacy. Don't run away. And finally, I want you to note before I introduce my topic, is if God is not with you, the devil is definitely with you anywhere you are. Because in 1 Samuel 16 verse 14, the Bible says, When the presence of the Lord departed from Samuel, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Samuel, and an evil spirit troubled him. Hallelujah. If you don't feel the presence of God, there is the presence of devils around you. Or there is the presence of demons around you. Anytime you don't feel God, you are sensing an atmosphere where God is not absent because there is no void. Hallelujah. So what is God's presence? God's presence means God's tangible appearance of himself. Or God's feelable manifestation with a man. Where you can feel in the room. Where you can feel as you walk on the street. Where you can feel in your words the sign and the signature of God's presence. Where you enter into the auditorium, you feel that God is here. Come on, hallelujah. There are places I go to and then I know you just feel it in the atmosphere. Come on, hallelujah. You see, God's arrival is always announced. When you read First Kings chapter eight, verse eleven, the Bible says, "When Samson, okay, when Solomon finished dedicating the temple, and the singers and the priests sang, and they were in unison, the Bible said the presence of the Lord, so, the presence of the Lord came, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud." For the glory of the Lord has filled the house of the Lord. So when God always comes to your life, it's announced. You will know when the atmosphere changes. Come on, hallelujah. You will know, you will know. You know, recently my wife was telling me, that why do I am shy? I said, no, I'm not shy. Why can I be shy? She said, you believe I am shy? I said, no, I'm not shy. She said, when I come to preach, my head will be down. Then suddenly, so you'll be like, somebody just come to me and then I begin to look at the crowd. Is it true? Let me ask you that. Is it true? Eh? Okay, it's true. That is maybe, okay, that, that's when the presence comes. You just, that boldness just comes. Hallelujah. But he said, yeah, I was shocked. But you know, when your wife says something, that is the final truth. That you, you can never believe somebody else than your wife. Hallelujah. You will always know when the presence arrives. All of us that have ministered before, you know that when you hold the mic, you can start in the flesh sometimes. You don't always start in the spirit. Anybody that tells you always start from the spirit is lying. Sometimes you start from your knowledge and from then you move. You always sometimes the anointing comes upon you on the stay on the seat. Sometimes when you are coming up, sometimes when you hold the mic, sometimes when you open the first day, sometimes when you even finish your introduction. I don't, I don't even understand me. Is this true? Or all of us come swinging in the Holy Ghost. There's a time when the manifest presence comes. You will always notice it. Hallelujah. But when the presence of God goes, it is always not announced. In Judges chapter 16 verse 20, when the presence of God comes on you, 
it is always announced. But when it leaves, it is not always announced. But then as I minister, I began to understand, sometimes on the stage, the anointing sort of departs and returns, depart and returns. So that you say something wrong or you do something you're not supposed to do. I don't know if you're understanding me. Let's say the Holy Spirit wants you to say something and you did not say it. Sometimes there's a way he can leave temporarily and then he comes back. So the way flock when you minister. So when the presence of God comes to your life, it is always announced. But when it leaves, you may not know. You may be working just like the fan rolling. Hallelujah. When the light goes off, immediately you may not know. But after a while, it slows down and it goes off. And she said, the Philistines, this is talking about something. The Philistines be upon thee, something. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times. Before, I would shake myself. And he wished not, he didn't know that the Lord was what? Departed from him. When God's presence comes into your life, you will always know. But when he leaves, he leaves slowly. That you no longer know that God is no longer with you. Hallelujah. But today, if the Lord has left you unannounced, you will rededicate your commitment to God and welcome his presence back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. David said, Lord, you can take away the kingship from me. You can take away the throne. Psalms 51, he said, but take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Hallelujah. Because the strength of a minister or the strength of a believer is the presence of God. That is your shield. That is your cover. That is your strength. That is your stamina. That is your guarantee of success. God is a God with a man guarantee success. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. While meditating yesterday and day before, the Holy Spirit told me something. I noticed something that see, one event can change your life forever. Forever. One thing can permanently, so like one accident can change your life forever. You will never be the same till you die. One accident. One accident that can amputate your leg or your hand. or what? Somebody can lie on you. There are people in prisons today that are totally innocent. One event can change your life forever. One, you see, what the devil can do in your life in one second, it can affect the rest of your life forever. So you cannot risk a second outside God. Why? Because a slight opportunity by the devil, what he will do, you will not recover for your, till you die. Many people is suffering from cancer. How many years will it take cancer to manifest? Do you know how many years it takes? Do you know how many years it takes for cancer to manifest? Cancer takes years. It takes a while. Sometimes it can be 16 years. Sometimes it can be 14. It depends on the variations. It, it, what what happens is the cell will be multiplying gradually. Then people don't even discover it till stage 4. The devil can plant the seed in a second. And then your life has Before you recover, it will be a miracle. Hallelujah. The devil, you give the devil a chance outside the presence of God. He can plan a sickness. He can plan a, He can plan an individual in your life that will change your life forever. So that is doing with God's presence is not just something to attempt. Because a moment outside God can change your life forever. A moment. Either in the physical or in the supernatural. Once you give a witch a chance, one night in your life, one second, what they can do can affect your life forever. One mindset they can plant, you will, the person will never be the same. Hallelujah. So hosting God's presence forever and permanently is something you should go for and never toy with. And I pray that the Lord will reignite your passion for you for his presence. You will not want to leave the house without his presence. But once he's there, you are sure. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you meet, see, there is a feeling that I love to have. 
but always I don't have it. And that is that feeling of his manifest presence. When I don't feel that feeling, I'll always ask in my spirit, Lord, are you with me? Once I know, because sometimes God will want to do grow, not actually grow in a sense, but you need to walk by faith and not by feeling. So even if you don't feel the atmosphere, you need to know that God is still with you. So that is, so anytime, for me, once God is with you, you are safe. Hallelujah. Now, four things about God's presence you need to get is God is omnipresent, but he has promised to be with us manifestly. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. But to believers, he has promised to be with us, what? Manifestly. Manifest. That means tangibly, feelably. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the Bible revealed that we are God's temple. But let's have Hebrews 13, verse 5. God is in hell. God is in the beer parlor. God is in the brothel. Hallelujah. God is everywhere. But for believers, he has promised to be with us in a manifest way. Let your conversation be with that covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. Just like when you go to a real shrine, you feel demons. When you go to a real church, you feel the presence of God. So the tangible presence of God is the privilege of believers. Number two, God's manifest presence has to be desired and sought for. You have to desire it. You have to go for it wholeheartedly. Whole. With the whole of your heart. In Exodus 33 verse 15, Moses speaking, he said, If your presence go not with us, Notwithstanding, God said, I will send an angel to take you there. But Moses insisted for God's presence. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. His manifest presence, you must want it. Come on, hallelujah. You must desire it. With the whole of your heart, at all cost. You must want to minister and people feel God. You must want to preach and people feel God. Come on. You must want to step into the room and people feel God. You must want to lay hands on somebody and people feel God. You must want people to enter your house and they feel God. You must desire it. You must long for it. And you must go for it. You must say, Lord, until I feel you, I am not contented. Until I experience you, I am not contented. And I am praying for an impartation for an appetite for God. In the depth of your heart. And I am praying for a zeal to pursue God in a manifest way. Number three, God's manifest presence can be lost. And then you can be denied God's manifest presence. That means God can say, I'm no longer going to work with you. He will deny you. Just like it happened in Samson. Just like it happened also for Saul. Finally, God's manifest presence has to be maintained. And has to be tamed. In Genesis chapter 4, 4 verse 16. When finally you have God in a manifest way. You have to maintain it. You have to tame his presence. You have to, at one time I preached a message, how to doctor the presence of God. You have to doctor his presence. You have to maintain it. The more God manifests himself to you, Genesis 4, 16, the streaker, he becomes with you in maintaining his presence. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. You have to stay there. You have to remain there. And this evening I'm teaching us the key to be dedicated to maintaining his presence. Hallelujah. 
maintaining his presence maintaining that atmosphere never to give the devil a chance in your life never to give the devil a chance to plant a seed never to give the devil a chance to plant a relationship never to give the devil a chance to manifest physically in your life that will destroy your life the first key to that is Oh, before I give you us the key, let me give us the benefit of his presence first. I believe knowing the benefit will help us to value the keys. The first benefit of having God's presence is that the presence of God can create beauty out of nothing. The presence of God in your life can make you beautiful and can create beauty out of nothing. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, down to verse 2. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So the earth was without form and void. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, to do, ma. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then all of us are aware of what the earth became. Your life may be looking as if there is no color, or as if there is no shape, or as if there is nothing to be admired. Hallelujah. You may look at yourself and you say you lack the necessary resources financially, lack the necessary resources academically, lack the necessary relationship in connection, or lack anything it takes in the natural. But the presence of God can bring beauty out of nothingness. Once upon a time, I remember going to Canaan land and looking at that place, an enigma of beauty. And I heard the story, when they moved into that place, it was a desert. It was a wilderness. It was a complete bush. But the presence of God came to that place and brought beauty. Out of it, the same way the redeemed come, once a bush, but today has become an hub of of activity. No matter how ugly your life is, the presence of the Lord can make it beautiful. The presence of the Lord can bring color to your life. It can make you to be desirable. People will want you. People will not want you because of you, but because of the presence in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know why people like men of God. I know the secret is not in what they are saying. The secret behind a man of God is the presence of God or the anointing in some way to, some people put it in his life. Once a man of God is anointed, people will like him. It doesn't matter what you are saying, especially once you are making little sense. People will like you because of the presence. Hallelujah. So the anointing, the presence is the key to bringing beauty out of your life. Secondly, the presence of God is a shield and cover against assault. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, the presence of God forms a shield, a cover against all form of assault. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That was God telling Jeremiah. But let's have Job chapter 1 verse 10. That was God telling Jeremiah, Now that I am with you, go ahead and do what you will do. I am a shield around you. Job also chapter 1 verse 10. Job 1 10. Has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5.
The Bible says, I, the Lord your God, will be a wall of fire round about you. 2 verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. The presence of God is a shield. It forms a wall around us. It forms a cover against all forms of assault. Hallelujah. For I say the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Never be afraid of the terror that fly by day and the arrow that fly by night. For the Lord is a shield around us. Hallelujah. Remember the Bible says the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not what? One. He maketh he. He covers us. He forms a shield around our life. By his presence. We are decked by his presence. Thirdly, the presence of God creates an established authority with men and with spirit. Once you appear with the presence of God, that is God with you, your authority is no longer in doubt and in question. When the presence of the Lord left Saul in 1 Samuel 16 verse 14, his authority and power with men and spirit was permanently lost. Israel no longer followed him. Principalities no longer submitted to him. In Luke chapter 9 verse 1, when Jesus called his disciples, he gave them his presence. And when they went, they returned with a testimony that said, even Satan bowed. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Power and authority over all devils and over all the devils and to cure diseases. Anytime you got in God's presence, hallelujah, your authority with men is confirmed. And your authority with spirit is confirmed. Just like anytime you walked in with your boss, the person that sent you is no longer in doubt. So your presence establishes your authority. Now you have the power to declare and to decree and to be listened to. To speak and to be attended to. Hallelujah. And this evening I hear with the presence of the Lord upon my life. And upon this commission. And by the time I speak over your life. With that authority it will be listened to. Anything in your life must listen to that authority. Why? Because we come in the name of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Number four, God's presence opened doors and it creates ways. When you come with the presence of the Lord, it opens doors and it creates ways. In Genesis 13 verse 21. Genesis 13 verse 21. When you come with the presence of the Lord, it opens doors and it creates ways. Hallelujah. Genesis 13, 21. See, the river Jordan was parted two times. But before that, are we there? Hallelujah. That's happened already again. Just let's look at it. Genesis 13, 21. The presence of the Lord opened doors and created ways. Make things to become possible. Who can stand against the way when Jesus said, I am the way? Hallelujah. Okay, and now we'll go down. Oh, I've not called the great scripture. Oh, sorry, 18. 18.21. Sorry. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it. Talking about going. Lord's story with Abraham. The Lord going 
with the angels or the angels going to confirm what is happening there if this is true and then the door of mercy was opened unto lord and he escaped secondly is second example about the god's presence opening doors and creating ways in is exodus 14 22 when the presence of the lord was with the children of israel and they stood before the red sea the Bible says the sea was parted together and they walked on dry ground. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thirdly, is the example of Joshua with the presence of the Lord opening the Jordan, parting the Jordan. Joshua chapter 3 verse 17. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 17, when the priest stepped into the river Jordan, the Bible says the river was parted together. Also, the last example is Elisha and Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 7 to 13, when Elijah came, he parted the river with his mantle, with the anointing, with the presence of the Lord with him. And when Elisha returned with the same mantle, the river was parted once again. When you stand before a Red Sea that looks impossible, hallelujah, and I can tell you in my small life I have stood before little impossible things that I know it will require a miracle for me to get out of it. But the presence of the Lord will always make a way for you and he will create a door for you. Where there is no space for you to sit down, the presence of the Lord will create room for you. And I speak right now in this nation where room needs to be created for you, that the space be created for you in the name of Jesus. Where a room needs to be created for you, maybe accommodation, maybe a job, Maybe a relationship. And maybe you are standing before a Red Sea. An impossible case. By the presence of the Lord that parted the Red Sea. By the presence of the Lord that parted the Jordan three consecutive times. By the presence of the Lord that delivered Lord out of destructions. I command the Red Sea and the sea in your life to part in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the place be created for you. May a job be created for you where the lease has been closed. I speak to someone right here by God's presence, a place is created for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you that the doors will be open. Every door that has been closed against us, it cannot resist the presence we come with. And blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus we come against every closed doors. In the name of Jesus we come against every closed doors. In the name of Jesus we come against every impossibility. Power of the Most High God. Let it break every closed door for us to step into. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is it that said no when the Lord has said yes. Come with the anointing of God against every closed doors. We come with the presence of God. And I declare that the doors are open. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We can have our seat. All doors open when the presence steps in. God cannot stand before a door and the door will be closed. Ay, 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 ay. God cannot stand before a way and the way will not allow him to pass. And when you carry God, no door will be closed before you. Hallelujah. Number five, the presence of the Lord guarantees favor with men. In 1 Samuel 2 verse 26, it is important to have favor with God and favor with men. And the child Samuel grew on 
And he was in favor. Come on, let's read. Both with what? The Lord and with men. I know it is almost impossible to be in favor with God and not be in favor with men. But you can be in favor with men and not be in favor with God. When you carry God, people will like you. They don't know what they like you, but they just like you. It is the favor of God. May that present create likability for you. Both for our sisters and for our brothers. May you be likable. People will choose you for no reason. Favor. 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 By his presence. Favor. By his presence. You are guaranteed favor. Favor. God's presence provides immunity against sicknesses and diseases. That is why he said, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment will condemn. Luke 10 19 also says, What I quoted earlier was Isaiah 54 17. But Luke 10 19 says, Nothing by shall, nothing shall by any means hurt us. Hallelujah. You are already okay. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you because of his presence. When a viper cling to the body of soul, it was said that by the heat, the people said that this person should die, and they were counting seconds. And when he refused to swell up, they say he's a god because nothing shall by enemies hurt us. The presence of the Lord give us rest and tranquility. In Exodus 33 verse 14, I'm rounding up, I'm hurrying up because of our time. Is Exodus 33 verse 14. Say, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Rest is guaranteed by his presence. Restlessness is guaranteed by the absence of his presence. God cannot be with you and you are agitated. Hallelujah. There is always rest, serenity, calmness, tranquility with God's presence. Anywhere you find tension, God is not there. But once God is there, there is rest. Right in the storm. Hallelujah. Once you begin to discover that your life is becoming restless, you are becoming easily agitated. You must check the presence of God with you and call it back and ask God for mercy. And the presence of the Lord guarantees victory. So, what are the keys to His presence? Four keys. The first key is concentration. God cannot be with you or be with me in sin. In Psalms 140, verse 13. Because the Bible revealed that even when Jesus Christ, when He took the sin of the world, God left Him. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Eli, Eli, O Eloi, Eloi, Lamak, Sabachthani, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Now, Psalms 140, verse 13. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. In Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible says, the ending part says, Thou art of a purer eyes than to behold iniquity. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 1, 13. When you want God, that the last part, but the first part, thou art of a purer heart than to behold iniquity and canst not look on iniquity. That means God cannot look on sin. When you want God to be with you in a tangible way, you have to clean up. You have to stay away from sin. When I'm talking about sin, I'm not talking about taking, uh, taking alcohol alone. Hallelujah. I'm talking about spiritual sins also. Example, malice. Bitterness, strife, jealousy, competition, pride. All these are subtle things that have a way of driving away God's presence from your life. It chokes the atmosphere. Hallelujah. We must learn to keep ourselves eternally clean and externally pure. Number two key is living a life of purpose and pursuing kingdom agendas. 
When you live for the kingdom, you enjoy the backing of his presence. When you live your purpose, you enjoy the backing of his presence. In Mark 16, 20, he says that, And God going with them. Also, 1 Samuel 3, 19, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Hallelujah. First Samuel 3, verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. Anytime you are doing God's work for your life, we can be sure that God is with you. Hallelujah. I was talking with a man of God recently. He was telling me that when he moved away from his purpose or from where God kept him, he began to know that he's going to die soon. Why? Because outside your assignment, your longevity is not guaranteed. I have heard that from almost all the men of God I respect. That once you live where God's presence is with you, you will not live long. If you are supposed to live for 50 years, you may live for 35, 40 years. Once you are outside his presence, outside your purpose, you might not live long. Hallelujah. His presence is guaranteed when you are on your purpose and on kingdom agenda. When you are on the mission for God, God is on the mission to be with you. Number three key to activating his presence dedicatedly is creating the atmosphere of his presence. In 2 Kings 3, verse 15, the Bible says, Elisha sought for a mistrial. There is always an atmosphere that is created by certain things. But now bring me a mistrial, and it came to pass when the mistrial played, that the hand of the Lord came upon me. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Colossians 3, 16 also, and Ephesians 5, 19. Creating the atmosphere of his presence. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, or dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, hallelujah, and hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. See, this one is internally in your heart to the Lord. All of us are aware of the magic that is created when you begin to worship. Anytime there is an atmosphere of worship, that it has a way of igniting the presence of God. Because it is said that when you praise the Lord, You exalt him for what he has done. But when you worship the Lord, he comes down to take your worship. Because only God is worshipped. Hallelujah. So create the atmosphere. If you cannot sing, develop the attitude of playing worship songs. Let your atmosphere be charged. Hallelujah. Let it be angelic activity friendly. I have from God's servant Mike Mudok. He said, everywhere in his house there is a speaker. Either a scripture is playing or a song is playing. I heard also from God's servant, Pastor David Ibiomi. He said the same thing in his house. He said, in the staircase there are speakers. He said, everywhere, either, right from the gate, either a worship song is playing or a scripture is, is reading. That is audio Bible. He said, they, they have mastered the art of creating the atmosphere. That's what Pastor Chris called his program atmosphere of miracles he said when you come for that program you know that you are not living for the next five or seven hours he said it takes hours to create the atmosphere you will see worship worship when you go for miracle services discover it is a common thing worship 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 yesterday i was watching a service of five hours the preacher was like one hour almost three hours worship praise and then the minister you see Miracle happen in a second where the atmosphere is charged already. Hallelujah. That is why you must learn how to create his presence, the atmosphere of his presence. Another way is creating a be with people 
that are always joyful, excited. See, when there is misunderstanding, it drives away the presence of God. When you have a roommate and then you are always fighting, you can be sure that that room is not saturated by God. When there is a misunderstanding, settle the score sometime and make sure that your room is safe. That is where you hear of robbery. That somebody entered the compound, entered the rooms, stole from this room, stole from this room, but didn't steal from this room. Have you ever heard stories like that? Yeah. They can study people that steal spiritually. They come with sham and then every once they enter your room, you sleep off. You are not aware that they are in the room until you wake up and discover that they have stolen your property. I know you, I know you have heard stories like that, right? Yes. And then you hear that they stole from they enter a compound and they stole from this room, this room, and they did not steal from this room. When you discover the room, they did not see there is something about their atmosphere. When there is joy and excitement in an atmosphere, God is there. Hallelujah. But that is why you must always be at peace. Create an atmosphere. Once in a while, play. Hallelujah. Play and celebrate. Misunderstanding does not finish in this life. Are you together? Misunderstanding does not what? Finish. There are things that I will never like till I die. But I will live with somebody that that is their person's hobby. When you keep focusing on that misunderstanding, there will never be peace in that house. So when you focus on, sometimes forget about the trouble. And just eat. <laughs> if it's food, just eat. Forget about, okay, if the person likes scattering his clothes. And you like your room to be organized. That means the person is sanguine. And you are choleric. Or you are melancholic. You kept complaining, complaining. The person is not changing. Charlie, you too. Join and be scattered in the room. Just, just, just join. The person is not changing, changing. And then, if he's a sanguine, for sure he will not change. The best he can do is to improve. But if you are hoping for a change, you are, it will not happen. The best he can do is to improve. And then the choleric will not change from being detailed and being organized. But you have to mellow down. You have to compromise the two of you. Come to a level. Hallelujah. I know of a couple, their husband is a complete sanguine. When they married early, the wife would sweep like five times a day. Arrange the bed like every time they day. Arrange the parlor every time. Some years later, <laughs> all of them are now, they became sanguine together. Like, say, you know, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me in the parlor like that. All of them are not affordable, and then there is peace. When you enter that family, there is feelable peace. They have one logo on the wall the joy of a house is peace. Yeah, th- that is why you look up to that. Forget about the way the room is organized. Let's have peace. Yeah, it's true. Let's have peace. When you focus on me, you must see. Let me tell you something because if the room is not safe, you too, you are not safe. You have to have peace. Hallelujah. We don't like the style of because there are, there is, because we grow up differently and things are done differently. It will take years to be able to blend. When we got married earlier on, I don't know how to eat rice without beans. It was always a problem for me. I was always starving because my wife could not eat rice with beans. Direct opposite. But nowadays... When we go anywhere and the serve us right without beans, she only eat little. She cannot eat the rice without beans now. <laughs> I have successfully won. Successfully. <laughs> Hallelujah. Could not eat beans. Yeah, could not. They didn't like it. Little will turn her stomach. But I have successfully won. I will not tell you the things I have not won. <laughs> <laughs> But you just adopted. It's just simple like that. Just adopted. But just let there be peace. Hallelujah. Let there be peace. So create the atmosphere. That is why we are fighting certain things in this church so that there can always be peace and joy and excitement. Hallelujah. Because it's very, very important for God's presence to be here. Number finally, the fourth key is John 14, 6, 21. The last key to God's presence is obedience. Obedience. Once you obey God, you you experience His tangible presence. 
He that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father, and I will love him. The last sentence says, and will manifest, manifest myself to him. Anything God tells you to do, do. If God is telling you to change, change. If God is telling you anything, just obey his instructions and he goes with you. Now, if you once have experienced God before, and then you have lost it, I want to give you ways to restore. The first duty to do is repent. Tell the Lord you are sorry. And then let your heart be broken. Because in Psalms 51 verse 11, that was what David did. He repented and then he was broken. And then what he felt before returned back to him. Number two is return back to kingdom agenda. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Plead the Lord for his presence. If there was a time when you worship, you felt a particular atmosphere. If there was a time when you wake up in the morning, you feel like singing. If there was a time, but now because of situations, because of misunderstandings, because of a lot of things, you don't feel that kind of atmosphere. You have to repent and tell the Lord, I am sorry for letting you go. I want you again. You have to be broken. Number two is Restore yourself to kingdom agenda. Go back to pursuing the kingdom or the agenda of the king. When Samson lost his presence because he started pursuing his own agenda, the last day of his death, he said, Lord, let me die with the enemy. And then that is Judges 13 verse 5 and then Judges 16 verse 26 to 13. When he said, Lord, let me die with my enemy, the presence of the Lord came with him. For the last time. And then he did what he did at his death. More than what he did when he was alive. And then finally number three. Be dedicated to pursuing his presence. Psalms 42 verse 1. As the tear. Or oh, as the. Yes. Panted. As the deer panted. After the water brooks. Did you know that I was going to quote this scripture? Or <laughs> Hallelujah. So panted my soul after thee. You must love God. You must want to feel him. Hallelujah. You know this song by One moment in your presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Because everything I need is in you. Hallelujah. If you can rededicate your pursuit for God's presence, a lot of things will change for your life. Like I said, I cannot impart the presence of God in my life to your life. Why? Because I cannot impart relationship. I can only teach you how to cultivate it. Nevertheless, I will pray for you what the presence can do in your life. Hallelujah. And then that will be what I'm ministering to us this evening. But I believe you learned something this evening. But let's talk to God briefly and say, Lord... I want your presence. Talk to him. Say, I want you manifestly. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Say, Lord, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you, Lord Jesus. I know you love the Lord.
Some of you came here because of your dedication to the church. You have to be here because we have a service. Some of us may come because you have an expectation. But I want you really to expect something from the Lord right now because I will be praying for us and I know the Lord hear my prayers. You may not know that God is answering all the prayers we have been praying. But I can assure you that God is answering. I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I believe. And I receive all the prayer that is coming on to me this evening. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe. I have an expectation. Create an expectation. Lord, what your presence can do, what it has done in the life of our fathers, let it do let your presence this church is called Shekinah the manifest presence of God there is what we call the dogza the habiting presence of the Lord there are over seven dimensions of the glory of the presence but the manifest presence of the Lord is called Shekinah the anointing of the Lord is here and I know God is going to answer my prayer upon anyone that believes. Lord, I come in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, I declare that may the presence of the Lord bring beauty out of your life in the name of Jesus. I declare over every ugliness, over, I, I hear the Lord telling me that God is making your past look as if it doesn't exist. Maybe there is somebody here that is having a past, but the Lord is telling me he will bring beauty out of your past. The reason why you will be celebrated will be brought out of your past. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the presence of the Lord form a shield around you. You will not be wasted before your time. No negative seed will be planted in you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord, the presence of the Lord create and establish your authority. When you speak, you will be listened to. When you command, you will be obeyed. When you decree, it will be honored. May the presence of the Lord, I pray that already open doors and create way. May the presence of the Lord embalm you with favor. Embalm you with favor. May God's presence provide immunity against sicknesses and against diseases. You will not be a victim of malaria. You will not be a victim of typhoid. Right now, as I'm praying, the Lord has shown me a picture of, you know, I've seen one time a typhoid operation where somebody was digested from chest to bottom. Any one of us here that the devil is calculating typhoid? Or your hair is suffering from typhoid? Is anybody here that been diagnosed of typhoid before? Anyone here? Put your right hand up. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let me see. Is anybody here right hand up? Particularly, for, okay, only two people. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Okay, free anywhere this typhoid has reached this is the last and i declare that that virus is dead in the name of jesus the effect of that virus will not need to a surgery i cancel that devil in the name of jesus i reverse the effect of the virus and the effect of your on your body in the name of jesus 
All of us are immune of diseases and viruses. Malaria can run somebody mad. High level of malaria can run people mad before. I know you are aware of that, right? So malaria is not a small sickness. No matter what you are exposed to, I declare your preservation. Genotype notwithstanding, the hand of the Lord shield you against every form of disease and sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are a lady here. The Lord has told me today is your good news. You suffer from cramps. I don't know. Thank God the ladies here are not much. But you suffer from cramps the day today. The Lord has told me today is your good news. You are immune from that pain from today. You will discover that the last time you will not feel the pain. You will, you will testify that you will not feel the pain. In the name of Jesus. You are immune from hereditary sicknesses. Uh, the Lord is doing great things today. Any sickness that is hereditary, your father had it, your granddad had it, your uncle had it. You had that so and so and so had it for mother's side. And you are afraid today. The Lord has told me to tell you in his presence that you are immune from that. Your body will not partake of that sickness. It is the gift of honoring his presence today. You are immune from that generational sickness. You and your children to the fourth generation are immune from that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the next in the presence of God does to you is to give you rest and tranquility. You may be having palm oil in your mind leading to depression. Once in a while you need to say, Lord, I leave it in your hand. I speak peace to your mind. I speak peace to your mind. I speak peace to your storm. You are having a misunderstanding in a relationship. I see someone here struggling with a relationship. I speak peace to your relationship. I speak tranquility. Anything you are trusting God for and it has disturbed you. The hand of the Lord is coming to give you rest. Rest in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you have disturbance and palm oil. Financially rest in the name of Jesus. I declare rest in the name of Jesus. When you are confused about the direction of your life, I bring rest by His presence. And finally, the presence of the Lord bring you victory in your battle. I bring you good news you have overcome. You have overcome that battle by His presence. As you go to sleep, you will wake up with a song in your mouth. Revive with the atmosphere with His presence. You will walk and say, Lord, thank you for your presence. You will weep and sob in his presence. Because today, as you are dedicated to him, he is dedicated to you. We give you all the praise. Can you appreciate the name of the Lord for what he has done? The Lord has done a lot today. Can you give him praise and say, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you see it? Can you feel it? The King of Glory is in. Oh, I can feel it. I can sense it. The King of Glory is here. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? The King of Glory is here. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yes, I can sense it. The King of Glory is here. We are expecting you, Lord Jesus. Thank you because you are here. Thank you for all you have done for us in Jesus' name.
The compass you need has just been delivered into your hands. You can get all the anointed messages on our Telegram channel at Shekinah Encounter Center Sermons. For more inquiries, you can also call 080-65-22-6276 or 080-26-11-2114. Remain rapturable, 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 rapturable.